The last day of Pompeii, a terrifying volcano eruption that destroyed a city. Escape now, hug later wasn't an option for the people of Pompeii, unlike in Star Wars. Can you imagine waking up as usual, thinking it's a day just like any other? It was the 24th of August, 79 AD. The people of Pompeii woke up thinking it was a normal morning, but at noon, they were shocked and surprised by the sound of a gigantic and sudden thud, followed by a vision of Mount Vesuvius rising above them. Let's discover today the history of the unbelievable and terrifying story of the last day of Pompeii. The city destroyed by a frightening volcano eruption. Don't forget to watch until the end for a bonus fact that you didn't know yet about Pompeii. What exactly happened on the 24th of August 79 AD in Pompeii? In the historic Roman city of Pompeii, the day had begun similarly to any other. Markets were bustling, stores were open, and people had gathered in the forum to talk politics and business. Although the city had an earthquake roughly 17 years prior, the ever-increasing populace didn't seem to be in danger as they went about their everyday lives. The city had undergone extensive renovations due to investment money and had since become relatively wealthy. The future was promising for this thriving Roman city. The 15,000 residents of Pompeii could not foresee the awful fate that was about to strike their beloved city that day. Not even in their worst nightmares. The inhabitants of this area of Italy's Campania resided beneath Mount Vesuvius, a sleeping monster, in the Bay of Naples. Although the Romans knew it was volcano, they had no idea how powerful it truly was, and they fatally thought that it was extinct. The tragic events of August 24th, 79 AD would show just how mistaken such a notion was. The local inhabitants had felt small earthquakes for four days before the momentous day itself, and they had become more regular as the days went on. Although there were warning signs, the Romans who lived in this area had grown accustomed to such seismic activity. Such mild earth tremors were regular in Campania, but on this particular occasion, they stood for something much, much more evil. The sleeping behemoth was awakening. Under the volcano, the pressure from the molten rock was building to the point where it would soon have nowhere to go except up. On August 24th, at 1pm, Mount Vesuvius erupted violently as a sign of rebirth. The volcano was seen above a vast, dark cloud that obscured the sky. Up to nine miles into the skies, the column of volcanic pumice, hot gases and ash spread across the skyline like black ink on blotting paper. The general look was like that of an umbrella pine tree as it climbed to a high height of a kind of trunk before branching out. The seething giant's fiery interior regurgitated 1.5 million tons of volcanic material into the atmosphere per second. On that day, Mount Vesuvius emitted thermal energy more than 100,000 times greater than the two atomic bombs unleashed during World War II on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The dark cloud didn't take long to travel the five miles to Pompeii. Darkness soon descended upon the city as scorching ash, pumice stone and molten rock started to rain from the sky. Some escaped into the adjacent countryside while others headed for the water. Many people made the futile decision to seek shelter inside their homes to weather the storm. At this point, the flat roofs of Pompeii's buildings and houses started to crumble beneath the ash and volcanic debris, crushing the poor individuals who resided inside their walls. And others lost their lives as a result of the falling rocks. The city was gradually covered in ash and debris for about 10 meters. The affluent beach town of Herculaneum, despite three miles closer to Mount Vesuvius than Pompeii, was able to avoid most of the ash and pumice fall from the initial eruption since the dominant winds were driving the volcanic cloud southeastwards towards Pompeii and the surrounding area. However, most people in Herculaneum were persuaded to leave their city as the horrific spectacle played out. Given that Mount Vesuvius was still very much active, they were the prudent ones. 12 hours after the volcano erupted, at 1am, the eruption entered its second and worst stage. 
at this point, the debris and gas column was almost 20 miles high and was starting to collapse from its own weight. The column nearly fell on August 25th due to the gas's inability to maintain their solid contents as they became denser. The obliterating fog started to rush down the volcano's sides. There would be six more pyroclastic surges that day, the first of which was this one. It sped past Herculaneum at a rate of almost 100 miles per hour. Those who were unlucky enough to be caught in its aftermath perished instantly from heat exhaustion since the surge's interior temperatures rose to about 250 degrees Celsius. Due to the relatively few skeletal remains in the town, historians had long assumed that Herculaneum had been mainly abandoned when the surges arrived. However, 400 well-preserved bodies were found in boathouses close to the town's barrier in the 1980s, proving that not everyone had decided to go. Herculaneum was eventually covered in 75 feet of volcanic material. On the second day of the eruption, as the sun rose, Pompeii's ashfall decreased. People living inside the city limits felt that everything had ended, and some of the evacuees even started going back to collect what little they still had. This was the eye of the storm if there ever was one during the volcanic explosions. There was a brief, deceptive calm before Mount Vesuvius erupted with its fourth pyroclastic surge. Around 7.30 in the morning, it struck Pompeii at over 200 miles per hour, with temperatures now approaching 300 degrees Celsius. At the time, every living thing in Pompeii would have perished in a fraction of a second. Even those who had escaped to the countryside were not safe, because the surges had penetrated far into the surrounding terrain. A fifth surge finally buried Pompeii. Pompeii and Herculaneum were never reconstructed. They were kept in underground time capsules as they lay buried beneath ash, dust, and rock. Roman robbers descended upon Pompeii soon after to take whatever treasures they could. The locations of Herculaneum and Pompeii were lost in the following years. They would go unnoticed until their unintentional rediscoveries in the 18th century. Italian archaeologist Giuseppe Fioroli realized that the gaps he found in Pompeii's layers of ash were left behind by decayed human bodies during the 19th century excavations. To depict the inhabitants of Pompeii in their final, desperate moments in realistic detail, he created the technique of injecting plaster into them. These casts, bodies stuck in horrific suspended animation, number over a thousand. Pompeii and Herculaneum are recognized as UNESCO Globe Heritage Sites and remain among the fascinating archaeological sites worldwide. Millions of tourists visit Pompeii each year, making it one of Italy's most well-known and well-liked tourist destinations and giving future generations a rare window into daily Roman life. Now it's time for our bonus fact. Pink Floyd, a rock band, captured a live concert in Pompeii's Roman Amphitheatre in 1972. There was no audience there, but director Adrian Mabin had realized his vision. The sound was incredible and unquestionably a significant event in rock history. The adjacent Mount Vesuvius' volcano eruption in 79 CE destroyed the city of Pompeii, burying it below at least 19 feet of ash and other volcanic debris. This event had made Pompeii renowned, and today's video tells the tragic story of the day that Pompeii was destroyed. Pompeii today and what remains of the city show just how vulnerable human life can be. Volke now would like to thank you for watching and supporting us. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn notifications on to stay up to date. Make sure to check out similar videos from our channel. That's all for today, see you next time.